Hey everybody, Movie Reviewer Next Door here, and I'm back with another review. And this time, I finished another. This is a 2012 um, horror mystery anime series. And I watched the English dub starring Greg Ayers, Monica Rial, um, Jessica Boone, Clint Bickham, Chris Patton. And Molly Cersei. Uh, and basically this anime is about a, a, a class in a high school, class 3, that 26 years ago or 27 years ago, a student, I think, committed suicide and now the class is haunted. So basically anytime there's an extra student in the class, the, um, the students have to find out which one is the extra student in order to um, stop the curse from killing them all. So, what did I think of another? Well, reg regrettably, this is one of those anime... I, I do have to talk spoilers because I have to talk about the ending. So, um, spoilers right now. Um, so, spoilers, spoilers. Spoilers for another. Um, but th I think this is a good anime series up until the twist, which kind of ruins it. Um, so I gave it a 6 out of 10. Um, if this twist was better, if it made more sense, or if it just didn't try to do a twist, this would probably be a 7 or an 8. Because up until then, I legitimately enjoyed this anime. But yeah, let me get to the actors. Um, Greg Ayers plays Koichi Sakakibara. He's just moved to this uh, new town, this new school. Greg Ayers is an actor that I have a love-hate relationship with because I don't think he does bad work, but I think he has the exact same voice in every fucking thing he's ever been in. And he's had over 292 roles, according to BTVA, or Behind the, behind the Voice Actors. So, yeah. Um, I can't take watching him in multiple things uh, one after another. Um, he's fine here. Inoffensive. Monica Rial plays Mei Misaki, who is the student in the classroom who's kind of odd. She has an eye patch covering one of her eyes, which uh, she lost and had a doll eye implanted. Um, this character, I... I like the character. I think Monica Rial does a good job. It's a bit of a muted performance from Monica Rial, and at first she's a bit goofy. As the show goes on, she gets better and better. Um, Brittany Karbowski plays Yukari Sakuragi, um, one of the students in the classroom. She is one of the performances that I wasn't big on. Brittany Karbowski usually plays middle schoolers because she does have a bit of a higher pitched voice than everybody else or than a lot of female voice actors in America and the other character that I can think of that I know off the top of my head that she played is Sunai Dekamori in Love Chinabia and Other Delusions which I think she played that well because that character was supposed to be middle schooler so definitely one of the low points of the voice acting here um Jessica Boone is another one as Izumi Ekazawa, who is the countermeasure, the op the lead officer of cou countermeasures with the curse within the classroom. Um, very wooden performance for most of it, even though she becomes very story relevant later. Um, Clint Bickham as Yuya Mochizuki. Um, he's fine. He's supposed to be kind of the wimp of the classroom, I guess. Kind of, I guess the femboy is how I, how you'd say it. But um, he's fine. Chris Patton plays Naoya Teshigawara. Um, he's fine too. And Molly Cersei is Reiko Mikami, who is the aunt of um, Koichi. She's the worst voice actor in the entire thing. She constantly mispronounces words as if she's drunk. Um, she, at, there's one point where me and my friend who I watched this with caught this where she says 
there's been too many incidences and they just left it in and constantly she just is stumbling over her own words and it's really just a bad voice acting performance it reminds me of like old 80s like OVAs where they just like grab a random person off the street to dub it and that's weird cuz um oh jesus because this actress has had many roles and is still doing stuff so it's definitely not somebody who's just not doing anything but um here's the thing with this anime What did I like about it before I get to what I didn't like? I think the art style is really cool. I like this kind of mix of a moe. Like, you've got the big eyes that you have in moe, like cutesy anime. But you've also got kind of a darker color palette. I think that works very well for the horror feel. Um, it works for when it's supposed to be mysterious. Um, the... The music is gorgeous in the show. Um, I actually do want to look up who does the music because I have to give them a shout out. I know they're not going to see this, but I don't know. Thought it would be nice. Uh, Ali Project, no. Um, music producer Shigeru Saito, Yoshiyuki Ito. Um, yeah. Those two. Um, I, I think they did a great job with the music in this. There's some really nice atmospheric tracks. Um, very cool. Um, the deaths i think for the most part the deaths are pretty shocking pretty fucked up well animated because they're, they're this film this anime does get a bit of a a recognition for being like gory i guess but it's not to the point where it becomes cartoonish for the most part it feels that some of the deaths are ridiculous there is a death where a character slips falling down the stairs her umbrella opens up and then she gets stabbed in the fucking throat um which that being the first death of the show again i am talking spoilers i am spoiling the show because i have to talk about the ending um this being a show where there is a supernatural element it does feel like an anime version of final destination quite a bit there um there are certain deaths that are just normal shit that can happen a character has a heart attack a character get, a character dies that that um has asthma i think he has an asthma attack and dies and there's multiple characters near the end that just get stabbed and die or get hung and die but yeah i think for the most part the deaths are well done and don't feel cartoonish. There are a couple. There's a bit where a bunch of characters all at once get crushed by a chandelier. And then later you see one character escapes from under the chandelier only to get crushed by a column. I'm sorry. I fucking laughed my ass off at that. Um, it just felt comedically timed. Um, there wasn't a death that kind of reminded me of Final Destination having to do with an elevator where a nurse... Um, the elevator cables end up coming loose and then the elevator crashes and she fucking smashes her face into the ground. It's pretty fucked up. Well done. Um, the horror feel, I think, at times really works with the show. It's going for mostly atmospheric. Um, but yeah, like, there are many things to like about the show. And I think the characters are pretty interesting for the most part what doesn't work about this show um the story is very convoluted um there there are 
like you you get exactly what it's going for yet it feels it has the need, it feels the need to explain every single little detail like minute details to you like you're an idiot and I'm not a fan of shows that do that or movies that do that I f- I find that really annoying um <laughs> Uh, when uh, it, there is a scene where Rika, I said Rika, God damn it, um, what's her fucking name? May. There is a scene where May is uh, explaining shit to Koichi, and it's like very. It's exp- it's insanely boring expository dialogue for like a straight like seven minutes, and I'm like, this is boring. Like the f- the the show does slow down constantly in the middle, and for the most part, I was fine with it because it does pick up near the end. It really does. The last couple episodes are pretty packed with stuff happening, um, and I'm fine with kind of slow burn stuff as long as you have stuff happen and reward the audience for the patients. But a lot of the times it just feels like they're they're like this entire episode is going to be um explaining everything and I wish they had maybe done this story in like twelve ish episodes or excuse me, eight or ten ish episodes. Kinda tighten up the pacing a bit. Um there are uh, there are bits where the music gets a bit too loud to hear the characters. There are times where it feels very um, much like it's blaring. Um, but I I do need to talk about this. The twist at the end. So the entire thing about the story is that um. You're supposed to be thinking like, oh, who could the extra student be? Because at the end, they find out that if you kill the dead and send the dead back to where they came from, then you can stop the curse that year. And no other students will have to die. So basically, a bunch of students go fucking kill crazy. And, um... Turns out... The killer, or not the killer, but the dead person, the extra character, was not a student, but a faculty member, Miss Misaki, who is, or excuse me, Miss Mikami, who is the same as Reiko. Uh, Reiko is Miss Mikami. Reiko being Koichi's aunt that we have not seen for a while in the show. They kind of forgot that the character existed. We had seen Miss Mikami, but these characters look almost nothing alike. There's not a scene explaining that they are the same person or or even hinting at it early on. They, they show this flashback as if it happened, and I distinctly remember that flashback not happening. There's a bit where she explains the rules of how this thing works, like the curse, or the rules of the classroom, class 3 work, but she never mentions that rule. That at school, you only call me this. But, yeah. Um, this twist makes no fucking sense. They try to rationalize it. They they try to be like, oh, you noticed this was happening? This is why this was happening. And it doesn't really make sense because they make you think that... They, they make you think that the grandparents are uh, mourning his mother, who also had died, rather than the aunt. But, yeah, it felt like a very cheap twist. Um, very cheap. And it kind of ruined the show for me. And apparently it did for a lot of other people, and I can really understand. I was I was really looking forward to how, how this was going to end, because I was actually having fun near the end quite a bit. But yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of the ending, and I think it does ruin what could have otherwise been a very, very fun, or very intriguing horror anime. So yeah. 
Um, I also, as a little bonus, I did watch the OVA. Um, another, the other, I think it was. Um, it's mostly just an extension of a flashback that um, May had about her sister dying. And it basically explains a p bit of her character where she doesn't like Ferris wheels because her sister died on the Ferris wheel. Or a died after going on a Ferris wheel. She faints and then she gets. turns out she has leukemia and she dies before she's able to answer May's call. And it it is a bit of a bummer to end everything on, but still, I I... I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, didn't get me as angry as the ending of Another did. But still, yeah. Um, that's about all I have left to say. Uh, this anime, I would recommend it if the ending made sense. But the ending doesn't. But at least it wasn't super long. It's like five hours. Because um, it's only 12 episodes. But yeah. Uh, not huge on the anime. It's not bad, but it's it's just okay. The ending really did kill a lot of it for me. But yeah, that was my review of another. If you've seen the anime, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. If you have any recommendations, put those down there as well. And uh, move your viewer next door. Out.